Hello, this is the third series that we're releasing this year. So this one covers our letters, numbers and colors. So I'll just quickly flick through and then I'll run through the different activities and the educational benefits. So these are all the benefits that we go on about in our, well, I go on about in the videos. Um, this is the first time that we've actually put them all together. So for each activity, so each pack, we've highlighted the different educational benefits covered in the pack. So this one covers bilateral coordination and crossing the midline. So these automatically come with handwriting when imagine a line between your nose and your belly button with the right hand side of your body crossing over to the left or your left crossing over to the right. So bilateral coordination is when we're doing a task with both hands together in the middle. Um, this can be cutting paper or cutting up your dinner, rolling up a page. Um, crossing the midline is when we're actively moving from one side to the other. Uh, we've got tracing in this activity, um, cutting, handwriting, we've got sensory play, I spy activity, so a pre-reading strategy, scanning the page from left to right as you would when you're learning to read. We've got uh, one, two, threes and numbers, so learning numbers and what they mean. We've got colours, shapes, attributes, and then classification as well. So I'll run through them as we go. Um, you can see there's a huge range here of the different learning areas. Um, you'll find that different series will cover different ones as well. And as we progress from week to week, we'll try and cover most of these. All right, so um, I've put these in a display folder. I just get these from Officeworks. They're the Jay Burroughs ones. The pages are nice and thick. Um, it just means that I don't have to laminate the whole pack, just easy way of storing it. And I can use it with paints and washable markers and I just wipe them clean with a baby wipe or paper towel. So these ones from the start, depending on how old, um, so these range from an eager two year old. I'd probably do the play and the rhyme ones, uh, sorry, the books and the rhymes before this one for two year olds. But for those that want to and are interested, two to that five year old age group. Um, so for obviously our younger ones, we don't want them holding pens till after four, just because the muscles and bones in the hands aren't developed properly yet. So we want them holding thick, chunky paintbrushes, pens, crayons, that sort of thing. Yes, these are perfect for that. Um, so we're following, so we're starting at the start and following the arrows. So there's one, two, and three. Now we can then go over and do this with our finger tracing. One, two, three. You can set up a sand tray and then practice the letters there um, or with a stick at the beach if you do this in the morning and then go out later, provided you're not in lockdown as we are right now. Then we're going to go around this one again, following the arrows. There we go. Now I've just got my paper towel to make that white clean. That will do. You also save paper as well by making them reusable. All right, you've then got the number, oh, hang on, back up. Uh, we've got app, alpaca, apple, anchor, ant, acorn, and anglerfish. We do have airplane as well, which starts with app, but it makes an air sound at the beginning. We've got the number of the week, which is number one. Again, we can trace over that and the word. For younger ones, probably wouldn't worry about the word, but again, if they're interested, um, get them into that habit and it's going to be practice, yeah? And we've got one apple, so one object here. As we go on, we've got two, we'll have two pictures here, yeah? The color of the week is red. So we've got a red stop sign here, a car, a dinosaur, red paint, a red ladybug, a red watermelon. So this one here is for me to color in. Again, I can trace over the color red. Um, I have this in front of me, which I'd prefer you not to use, but I can't actually see anything red. I've got all my fluoro paints out. I'm gonna use a marker this time and color it in. Um, you can choose to do this straight onto the paper if you want to. You can use, um, what could you use? You could color sand or color rice and then turn it into a sensory activity there. Or you could just use washable markers or paints and rub it clean again. I'm gonna rub it clean before I fold it because I'll make a mess of that page too. Now we do have dotted thirds in this one. Um, for starters, from a design point of view, it just helps me keep all the words um, and letters in the same, sorry, um, at the same level, yes? So here, 
it can be tricky um, seeing where a letter or understanding where a letter actually sits on the line. Yes, so these ones are to get used to how to write the letter, the correct letter formation. This is where we see them on the dotted thirds. All right, so for this one, for older ones, Happy for them to use a pen, otherwise get out the paint or just trace it with your finger. So this is just handwriting practice. So having a go on these ones here and tracing and then having a go down here on the dotted thirds by themselves. Um, if you've got a younger one, we can just practice again how we did on the other one or just skip it all together and go straight to a sand tray. You can just um, put some sandpit sand in the bottom of a baking tray or rice or grains, buckwheat. Uh, you can tell I learnt Victorian, so I'm adding ticks automatically. And again, wiping it off. I think I've got just as much paint on my hands. Hang on, I need a new one. There we go, and we'll wipe that one off as well. Um, I recommend, so you can use whiteboard markers, but they leave residue and they make a mess after a while. Um, as well as if in winter they get it all over their um, clothes with their sleeves. So uh, Crayolas or these are from Clever Patch. Just in case that's useful, I get quite a few people ask. All right, so we've done the letters. Now we're onto the numbers. You don't need to see me do that again. This will change. So this week it's number one. So we've only got one apple. Next week it will be two. This one, this is pretty. So we're going to circle all the pictures with red in them. So I've got a red fire engine, we've got a red barn, red cherries. Um, this is a crossing the midline activity as well because I'm going to, at the moment I'm working with my right hand on the right side but I'm going to cross over. Yeah, red strawberry, red ladybug, red capsicum. This is a good vocab one as well because we're adding on, so we're naming the pictures as we go or you can help your little one do that. Red apple, red sugar jar. The fairy's got a red dress, there's a red poppy and the red scales. Oh, hang on, and a red tomato. I think that's all. And then how many red circles can you see? So this one is bringing in colors and shapes again. So we've only got one red circle this week. So that'll build on as we go each week. You can talk about the different other shapes. We've got triangles, pentagons, square, stars, and you can count them up as well as hearts, as well as hearts is what I meant to say. All right, wiping that clean again. Again, for this activity, you can talk about the other colors in there and do counting. So counting as you go. Did I count that as I went? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had eleven red pictures in there today. And then we've got, so this is a dot to dot. You can take it out and do it um, with pen and paper. You can do it with paint. Um, I'm going to do it with going to use my pen to start with. We've got a puffy paint recipe there too. So I chose to print it twice. I'm going to leave this one in here. I'm going to do the puffy paint on this one, which I'll come back and do because I didn't get that ready. Um, then we're going to cut it out and I'll stick it in that page. So for this one, I didn't put a starting point. So we'll just start at the top and work our way to the left. So joining dot to dot. You probably don't need to see me do this, do you? I'm pretty sure you've got the idea. So the, going the whole way around, um, for this one, I'm going to come back and show you that one soon. This one's a nice spy activity, but we've got to make our magnifying glass first. So I'm going to cut around the edges, cut out the middle, laminate it, and then leave the glass in the middle here. And then we're going to go around the house, which I'm not going to take you around my messy house, but you with your little one will go around your house and then look for things that start with the letter A. You'll look for things that are red, like the magnifying glass, and you'll look for things that have the number one on them. So we're really looking at environmental print for this one, as well as colors. So I am going to get my puffy paint ready, cut this out and laminate it, and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. So we've laminated the magnifying glass. I just need to cut around the edges. While I was doing that, I was getting the puffy paint ready. So I've got equal parts of salt, flour, and now water. I didn't wash my paintbrush, so hopefully not too much blue comes out of it. So this is the second plane that I printed. I've got one in the folder 
um, to trace. Now I've put too much water in, so I'm going to use flour. The salt is just to pre uh, preserve it. And it's super lumpy because I just chucked it in there. Uh, hang on, let's mix it a bit more. I want it quite thick like a paste. That'll do. There we go, that's much better. This is good for your little ones as well that are still mouthing, so your toddlers and babies, because it doesn't matter if they eat it. It's gonna be gross, but it's just salt, flour and water. There you go. Should look something like that. And we're going to paint it on. You can finger paint if you feel the need. I do not feel the need to stick my fingers in that. So we're gonna paint all that on. Uh, then you chuck it in the microwave for, in mine, I tend to do it for about 40 seconds and it will all puff up. So it goes on like this and it basically cooks. And then we can cut it out and stick it in our book. All right, I'm going to do this on time lapse. Hang on. Back again. Uh, this was only 25 seconds, so you can see now that it's cooked on there and it's thick and bubbly. So this is adding to the sensory part of our activities. I'm going to cut this out. Hang on a sec. I probably could have been a bit nicer and chosen an easier shape for week one, especially. Uh, but I just wanted to remind you as well, we've got our helping hand here and our cutting hand. Our cutting hand stays still. It's our helping hand that does the movement. So our cutting hand should be our dominant hand. Under seven, if they haven't decided, that's completely fine. It's after seven that we go to an OT and get help, or if you're concerned. Um, it is an issue, though, if they're using... So if they're not crossing the midline, if they're doing half the job with their left hand and then the other half of the job with the right. So just keep an eye out for that. All right, so we've got our magnifying glass and our plane. So let's go back to our book. And we've done these activities. They're all good. Our plane, so I'm going to, hang on, I didn't wipe that off earlier. Wipe off the marker and stick my plane in here. There we go. And then we can go around the house and do this activity. Now that we've got our, sorry, the lights are a bit annoying there, aren't they? Now we've got the magnifying glass. So we're looking for things that start with app, things that are red and the number one. And that is it for this week. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I hope you do too and enjoy the activities. I'd love your feedback as well. Um, yeah, I will talk to you soon.